Hello all, welcome back to our channel Lingua and Literature. Today's topic is University Wits. The pre-Shakespearean dramatists are known as the University Wits. They are so called because they were associated with the universities of Oxford and Cambridge. The condition of the drama that preceded them was precarious and chaotic. The classicist had form but no fire. The popular dramatist had interest but little sense of form. Thus the drama was struggling between the well-formed skill and structureless enthusiasm. The group of the university wits was able to unite the classical conception of the drama and enthusiasm of the popular dramatist. They came with their poetry, passion and their academic training which gave Shakespeare a fitting medium for his genius. The group of the university wits consists of great writers like Thomas Kidd, John Lilly, George Peel, Robert Greene, Thomas Lodge, Thomas Nash and Christopher Marlowe. All of them revolve round the central sun Marlowe. These university men were usually actors as well as dramatists. They knew the stage and the audience and in writing their plays, they remember not only the actor's part but also audience's love for stories and brave spectacles. They are trading behind as actor and then they revived old plays and finally become independent writers. They had a common store of material from which they derived their stories and characters. Therefore, we find frequent repetitions of names in their plays. They were romantic in their attitude and represented the spirit of Renaissance. The university which contributed to the formation of the romantic comedy which blossomed forth in the hands of Shakespeare. Okay, let's now first say about John Lilly. John Lilly's notable works are Euphia's Anatomy of Wit was his first novel and then Euphia's and his England and then Campus which is a historical play Sappho and Four, a classical play with gods and goddesses Galatea, a pastoral comedy Endymion, the man on the moon which is a classical play Midas, which is a mythological play Mother Bombay, comedy in modern times Love's Metamorphosis, which is a pastoral comedy, and at last The Woman in the Moon is a pastoral comedy. Thus, these are all the most notable works of John Lilly. John Lilly, the courtier, made notable contribution to the formation of English comedy. His comedies are romantic as well as witty. Lilly produced lighter words well suited for the expression of lighter sentiments. He developed characters suited for romantic comedies. His greatest service to the drama consists in his writing plays in prose. His plays prepared a way of Shakespeare's A Midsummer's Night's Dream and As You Like It. Lilly is best known for his romantic prose work Euphias that gave English language euphistic style. Walter Scott satirized Euphemism in the character of Sir Piers E. Shapton in the monastery and Charles Kingsley defended Euphemism in Westward Ho. Lily's The Woman in the Moon is a prose play influenced Shakespeare's Midsummer Night's Dream and As You Like It. Next, let's see about George Beale and his notable works. His notable works are The Famous Chronicle of Edward I, The Old Wife's Tale, which is spirited and good-humored fairy tale comprising a play within a play. The Battle of Alcazar, the verse of which contains flights of exuberantly virile rhetoric, which was published anonymously. Then the Rhymant of Paris, which was in rhyming couplets. Next, The Love of King David and Fair Bethsaib, which was a biblical narrative. And finally, The Troublesome Ruin of King John. George Peel's comedies are both satirical and humorous. Peel made drama rich and decorative by his poetic wealth. Much of the sweetness of Shakespeare's plays was in existence in the plays of Peel. The Arraignment of Paris is a pastoral play in verse which celebrates Queen Elizabeth's beauty and virtue. The Old Wife's Tale is a play partially written in prose. It is a satire on romantic dramas of the time, the first English work of this kind. George Peel's work The Troublesome Ruin of King John which has become the source for Shakespeare's King John. Next, let's see about Robert Greene and his notable works. The comical history of Alphonsus, the king of Aragon, wrote in the style of Christopher Marlowe's Tambour Line. The national biography calls Alphonsus a dreary imitation. The honorable history of Friar Bacon and Friar Bangde have been a knockoff of Marlowe's Dr. Foster's 
but it's a superior play. Next work was the Scottish History of James the Fourth, which was a historical play and also an exceptional melodrama. And the uh, History of Orlando Furioso, a parody of a Marlowian hero. And uh, finally, a Looking Glass for London and England, which was written along with Thomas Lodge, which uh, was highly didactic and uh, it is a biblical comedy with the comic elements. Robert Greene showed the way to Shakespeare. His works prepared the ground for the historical place of Shakespeare. Robert Greene's Pondasto or The Triumph of Time is a prose romance which is a source for Shakespeare's winter's tale. Greene's Groat's Worth of Wit bought with a million of repentance which is a prose track in which Greene called Shakespeare an upstart crow beautified with own feathers. Fairy characters in his work The Scottish History of James IV slain at Flodden inspired Shakespeare's use of fairies in A Midsummer's Night's Dream. Next, let's see about Christopher Marlowe. Marlowe's first play was Dido, Queen of Carthage, was written while he was a student. Tamperline the Great was written in two parts which narrates the story of Scythian Shepherd and his thirst for power. One of his most famous play Dr. Faustus is the story of a scholar and his quest for infinite knowledge and power for which he sells his soul to the devil. This Jew of Malta is about one of the most unforgettable characters in world literature who was Barabbas, a pure, evil, a Machiavellian man. His Edward II is about a weak-willed king, a dramatic tension, individual needs and the community's demands between duty and desire. Hero and Leander is a mythological poem of 818 lines and this unfinished poem was finished by George Chapman after Marlowe's death. It was Marlowe's Edward II which paved the way for Shakespeare's Richard II and also rise to subject matter of the drama to the higher plane. All of Marlowe's work paved the way for later tragedy. Marlowe renovated blank verse which was described by Ben Johnson as made the mighty line which fit for the expression of the highest thoughts. Next, let's see about Thomas Kidd. After Marlowe, Kidd is one who was influential writer of tragedy. His play, The Spanish Tragedy or Hieronimo is Mad Again, is a revenge tragedy. The revenge of Hieronimo, the Marshal of Spain, for the murder of his son Horatio, who was in love with Belimperia by the Prince of Portugal and Belimperia's brother Lorenzo. Kidd was influenced by the tragedies of Seneca. All his tragedies were inspired by Shakespeare to write revenge tragedies like Hamlet. Thomas Kidd, the author of Hypothetical R. Hamlet, that may have been one of Shakespeare's primary sources for Hamlet. Next, let's see about Thomas Nash. His work, Unfortunate Traveller or The Life of Jack Wilton, is an adventurous tale of a young fellow named Jack Wilton. This play is a type of picaresque tale considered as the precursor of Picaresque novel. It is also considered as the first English historical novel. Nash was in a pamphlet war with Gabriel Harvey, whom Nash abuses in Piers Penniless. Some of his other works are The Anatomy of Absurdity, Preface to Green's Menopon, Terrors of the Night, Isles of Dogs, which was written along with the writer Ben Johnson. Finally, let's see about Thomas Lodge. Thomas Lodge came out as a literary figure with his Defense of Place, which was a pamphlet written as a replay to Stephen Gosen's attack on stage plays. Rosalind was his best-known prose romance, which later on became the plot for Shakespeare's As You Like It. Thomas Lodge collaborated with Robert Greene on the play A Looking Glass for London and England. Some of his notable works are The Wounds of Civil War, A Margaret of America, A Treatise of the Plague. That's all about today's topic. To get updates, please subscribe to our channel Lingo and Literature. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned.